Oh, hey, hi, hello once again, and welcome to another Up Your Nose edition of a Haphazard Universe production with your host, Lance Renard, in his hippie glasses. Bum, ba, bum, 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 when you are from, like, Great Britain, uh, that, that means something different than if you are from America. Now, I'm not talking about the Beatles song, which starts out with uh, God Save the Queen. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, yeah, we see things differently, depending on what part of the place that we're in on Earth. And as I have mentioned in my past several videos, I am out mitigating emergencies. Finally, back on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. And I am heading out to the mountain. Da, da, da. The mountain man was the gentleman that I had jammed with uh, about a month ago. A little less, and I am actually I'm driving through uh, over the surface of the moon. This is these are the roads of Minnesota, Minnesota, and uh, yeah, you betcha, Minnesota, don't you know? Where we do a lot of fishing, and uh, everything's about oh, a couple hours from here. And uh, yeah, somebody from Minnesota, how far is it? I said, well, it's about 45 minutes. That's how far it is. And these are the ways of the Minnesota people. Now, to keep from being antagonized by my fellow drivers, I try not to make it look like I am communicating to a telephone. Because that's just offensive. I have FEMA registration on the front and back. I have FEMA plates on my car. And I'm a 52 exam FEMA representative. Shadow Ops, a little more like it. You say, well, if you're a Shadow Ops, wouldn't you not say anything? Well, the discombobulation of mankind is a common occurrence in our um, government today. I'm pretty sure that the Commander-in-Chief, as he is known as, is listening to everything I say, which I don't mind, um, because he's been repeating so many of these details recently about the, the deep state in the black, or I'm sorry, the shadow government, and um, it's true. I mean, it's just like, I will put our video, and then I will watch a speech he makes it the next uh, few days, and he's like repeating stuff that I've been saying. Thank you, Mr. Trump, for listening to Lance. Uh, but you know what? If you put yourself in the position of a puppet and you try to speak up against the puppeteer, well, let's not forget John F. Kennedy. And his situation was uh, similar. However, the puppeteers were a little more paranoid back in those days, and they found that if you flag it right in front of their faces, um, then people won't believe it. Because they go, why, they wouldn't just tell you. <laughs> we know better. Oh, do you? I just uh, disconnected from my other shadow location, and one of the individuals there, uh, you might call the commander of my shadow location, uh, he second-guessed everything. He was the doubting Thomas to my Christ. He was the he was the guy that doubted everything that you say, and it's it's his uh, comeback to whatever you say. For instance, I just picked up a beautiful little five-inch blade, which I used to cut uh, cords and such. And, uh, you know, camping knife, essentially. Very nice little knife. And uh, I, I had forgotten to mention that today's production was brought to you by Juicy Fruit Gum. If you want to ruin your teeth and get highly addicted to sugar, eat Juicy Fruit. The only way to rot your teeth. And now I would say something to my, um, what you 
might call landlord, water well drilling dude, and he would come back every single time with a doubting question. So it's like you say, it's 65 degrees out today. And he goes, oh, is it? Is it really? I say, well, you're always second guessing me. Oh, do I? This is a common, what do you say, a behavioral anomaly that people will walk into. And another one is what? So you'll say something to somebody, even though they heard you clearly, you spoke clearly, you enunciated properly, and they go, what? Um, and I'm not just uh, picking people apart. I'm just like asking you to watch or take a look at your own behavior. I look at mine. Oh, do you? Yes, I do. And I try to keep myself in check with the massive amounts of power that uh, our Commander-in-Chief has bestowed upon me. And, uh, you know, it's not just that way. I, it took me a year to get through those exams, all of them. I printed everyone out so I could effectively cheat on each. And uh, <laughs> wagons full of paper, little red wagons, and they're stacked high. And uh, I have them in a little glass case. I don't. I'm just kidding. However, um, all of the uh, uh, training manuals that I went through to achieve the 52 level exam uh, that I have achieved and got my certificates from my certification was due to the fact that I had nothing but time, I was collecting unemployment, and I had mass amounts of weed to smoke. I do not condone smoking marijuana unless, of course, it's for medicinal purposes. So, in that nine to ten month period, as I went through, and it was all day long, I would exam, 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 pass, 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 and yeah, and so I did not expect to receive certification from the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. Well, I'm a PPO, a PIO, a CPAC, and you know the uh, acronyms that are used, Personnel Procurement Officer, Personnel Information Officer, and for the Police Department, a PIO is a Public Information Officer. The guy that, or the woman that you see on the news giving the data of what's going on here, and this is how we handle it, you always have that same person. That's the PIO, uh, person, public information officer. But in my unique position um, as a subordinate and commander, I have to um, change hats. I'd say, oh, speaking of which, hang on, hang on, get rid of that stupid hat. I told you not to wear that stupid hat. I like it. Uh, well, it's an identifying factor, the hat. So as I travel through uh, these states, uh, and excuse me, I'm going to turn off the air conditioning here. As I travel through these states, uh, the, the number of times that I have traveled through, I show up in like a the middle of Montana, what you might call it, the middle of nowhere. Well, you know what? Nowhere is always somewhere, so. <laughs> um, to walk into a gas station, the most common thing I hear is, hey man, where you been? And uh, the idea here is that um, they've seen me so many times that they think I live just next door. Well, who am I to make somebody wrong? It's not my job to make you wrong. It's my job to fortify and certify and uh, indemnify all of these little aspects in our lives that can that can really help us in our emotions, in our thoughts, and of course in our actions. So, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Now, I have a sense of obligation after. Um, our orange-haired commander-in-chief said uh, national emergency. The first thing my ears did was spark. So I had to put them out. And then the next thing I heard was, well, it was a month or two later, because I knew I could activate um, on behalf of the nation and the security of our people. 
Well, I kind of look at it differently. It's not just our people and our nation. It's our world and the world's people. You go, why are you pushing the new world order? Well, no, I'm pushing the fact that there's a puppeteer and the puppets, if they speak up, they get the old John F. Kennedy treatment, which really isn't humorous. And I try to be uplifting and humorous and informative and occasionally I'll do the old X-47 or some such thing and not even explain it, but that's what operations are all about, is to uh, make it clear to certain people and make other people wonder, and that's what <laughs> President Trump's been doing. Not that I like the guy, I mean, you know, he, 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 guy can't even kiss, he doesn't know how to French kiss at all. So the thing is, uh, it's not about liking somebody. It's about understanding their situation. And so many people are, you know, are, are absolutely brainwashed and confused. Pardon me, I'm trying to take it away from this rattling PA mic, which is right here. Breaker one nine, breaker breaker. And I'm not going to turn that on because when I did it last time, I was like, oh man, I, how annoying! And that's kind of my job too, is to uh, to do it right to do it in stealth, and to do it openly. What? <laughs> yes, I said it, I said it. Figure it out. So, um, where am I going? Well, I'm going to the mountain, and I'm gonna go tell it on the mountain. And then I'm gonna jam with one of the heaviest hitters in music that I've ever met. A man who has played with and known the Hendrix family, that's Jimmy and his brother Leroy and Jimmy's sister Tina. And I won't go into any more personal details, but um, this individual's band has opened up for uh, pretty much every big name you can think of. ACDC, Led Zeppelin, uh, Chick Corea, Rolling Stones. Uh, he named off like 30, 30 of them. I opened up a stage once with my music, which I intend to play with the Mountain Man. And I will continue to identify him as the Mountain Man. And the last jam we had, I posted it, and then he's like, no man, don't, don't, don't take that down. I'm like, why? It was a great jam. He's like, yeah, well, um, I'm just, you know, working on the slide guitar, getting my technique down, and, uh, oh, oh, moon, moon, moon surface, crater, welcome to Crater Abienza. So, on this gig, I intend thoroughly to jam with the big man, the mountain man, and, uh, post him, because he said that he was, he said, I'm going to work on your tunes while you're gone, I'll remember them, I'll work on them, and when you get back, you know, when you come back, which I'm doing right now, um, I'll have it together. Now, that's like Mick Jagger saying, I'm going to work on your songs. It's like, wow, I am honored, I am humbled, and uh, not belittled by any stretch of the imagination, but fortified in my abilities to write music, which you may have seen the one that I did, check it out, uh, anything for you. And I'm going to alter those words some to the degree that I am what I'm doing right now. I'm looking forward to meeting uh, Mr. Fee, and I'm just say Fast Eddie from the old days, who is a uh, leader and organizer of a militia in Central California, and ironically, he and I are old pals. I mean, you know, old buddies. When we get together, we're going to probably give each other big hugs, wet sloppy ones, and roll up a fatty and crack a brew if either one of us decide to start drinking again, and um, yeah, have a little chit chat about the security of the nation, what we can do for the world, uh, because once, you know, were we to, we, were the people of this nation willing and able to rise and uh, avert this tyranny and take our nation over once again, and uh, re-establish a different form of, of, uh, of 
you know, we don't want the Democrats and Republicans and this separation of mindsets and ideas is absolutely preposterous. Uh, there are other ways to form things, create things, and do things, as I mentioned in my other video, um, that are very positive. So I will come back. I will be putting out more and more uplifting and informative videos. I know this was very short, but um, at this particular juncture, I am just pouring sweat. Because that's what I do, mister, and that's what I do for a living. No, it's really hot in here. And it's probably because I'm wearing uh, you know, long johns and three shirts and all this. So the next time I just might be naked. Kidding, of course. Now let's think of today's joke. I, I hadn't really planned on even doing this particular production uh, immediately, but I thought it's been so long, you guys are waiting, and, and I'm a 932 on the side sort of thing. I know that's not a CB term, so don't even worry about it. However, what's a grand and great joke that I can convey briefly and enjoyably? Well, um, hmm, there were three ministers, and uh, they all stood in agreement together in a room. <laughs> so there you go. That's probably one of the funniest jokes I've ever heard in my life. And, uh, or said so let's just give everybody a break try to understand that our positions may be, may be just a little discombobulated because of the details of the puppeteer and I would like to thank uh, the President of the United States for listening to everything I say and repeating it on his podium or at his podium I, I would be great if he stood up on his podium um, well, if he was wearing a kilt. So, you guys, I don't care if you comment or uh, subscribe that much, but a like really means a lot to me. And if you thumbs down, I'm going to cry all night long. All night long. Dun, 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 dun. All night long. Dun, 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 dun. So, once again, you might want to, with any of these videos that I have uh, put out, especially the one on the Queen. Uh, there's a couple others that are really uh, effective and accurate in the Universal Contract Code and how we are treated like cattle. Um, and in case you didn't know, Bill Gates put out a speech in 2017 uh, just openly stating, in order to stop climate control, we need to reduce the population of the world by 1.5 billion people. And everybody in the audience went, yay, 1.5. He's talking about murdering you people, and you're applauding him and saying, yay. Not you, but the people who are in the audience. What? What? Okay, gang, if you're, in, if you're in an audience and somebody starts talking about murdering over a billion people, you might want to say something aside from, yay, in a happy mood. Um, you might want to toss them a little lead or, you know, something of that fashion with possibly a, an armor-piercing tip on it just to make sure he hasn't got a steel cranium. So... I know uh, people believe in the cloning, and because of all of the people that look so much alike, I've seen myself uh, back when I was a kid. However, let's let's just look at things with an objective viewpoint, and uh, yeah, I think it's better for our, for our uh, attitude rather than be upset. Now, I am going to cover little details, little like 5G. Like the brainwashing, we are constantly hammered into. I've been speaking to, so far, I, everyone but North Korea, South Korea, and uh, China, and of course uh, the UK. Uh, but people from those countries, and Norway and Sweden, um, consider the fact that if we rose together as a unified group, world group, it's not about slaughtering each other, it's just about taking back control and identifying the puppeteer, the 
because I may have mentioned if you can if you can think of a name of the person to shoot to stop this, that's not the puppeteer. However, I do believe that execution is in order. I apologize for saying that. Um, but if a pedophilistic person ruins a child for life because of their seedy little needs or desires or creepy ways, that child is affected for life. And that pedophilic, pedophilistic person needs a bullet in the head. And yes, I am quite adamant in that. And this whole idea of, well, we can fix them because we're... No, you can't fix them. You're deluded, you're brainwashed, and you don't let that kind of uh, insidious creature back into your society to harm more people. I have a utopian viewpoint. I will convey, little by little, the realities of my utopia with each of these productions over the next few days. So thank you for watching, and the people who are privy to the militia attitude to stand up to liberty and to crush tyranny uh, thank you. Thank you. So much. I'll talk to you soon.